What's up guys? Welcome back to Man Cave Collectible Reviews. Coming at you today with another figure review. And today we got a hot one for you. We have got the new Masterverse Beastman. This is from Masters of the Universe, New Eternia line. It's got the 40 year sticker here, which is pretty cool looking on the box. Just found this guy at my local Target this week. And I'm really excited to bring you a figure review of him as this is kind of one of the most anticipated figures from this line in quite some time. Head over to Big Bad Toy Store and get your figures on pre-order. Head over to Big Bad Toy Store for all your toy needs, whether it's Hasbro, Mafex, Hot Toys, and all the other major brands. They've got it along with $4 flat rate shipping. Click the link in the description to see what BBTS can do to fill that need you have in your collection. There's a link in the description below. Kind of helps out the channel when you click that link, so consider using that if you would. Let's jump right into this. As we've already said, we got the packaging here. We got a 40-year sticker, Masterverse up top. We got a pretty good image here of Beastman on the front window of this. The new attorney logo there, Beastman's name there. Mattel's got a little logoing down here in the bottom. As we flip around to the side, we got some really nice artwork of Beastman there. I really love this club that they've got here with him. We're going to take a look at that here in just a minute when we get him unboxed. And then flipping around to the backside, we've got even more amazing artwork here. A little write-up on Beastman, which you can pause and take a look at if you want. And also some other figures in the line that are coming here very soon. We've got our Catra. We've got our Zodiac, which we knew were coming. And then we got Skeletor and He-Man, it looks like, which are from that kind of more CGI-looking show. The, to me, it's kind of more of a kitty type show. Some of those figures actually look pretty good, in my opinion, as well. We see a lot of those on our toy hunts. And then as we come around to the other side, we've got Beastman Tribal Leader there on that side. Let's go ahead and crack this guy out of his packaging, see what we got. All right, guys, we got Beastman out of his packaging and onto our view table looking nice. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cover kind of this tribal look first. So we'll leave him this, we'll take a look at that, and then we'll kind of go to more of the traditional look, and I'll show you how that looks. Let's go ahead and start off with accessories first. So you can see the two hands that he comes with out of packaging here. You can see we've got kind of a relaxed open hand as well as a fist hand. We get two holding hands here. So this will be to hold the two weapons that we're getting ready to take a look at. And the weapon we've got is this club, which really, really is a cool looking club with all these spikes on it here. Now, mine, as you can see, it came pretty warped out of packaging. A little bit of hot water, dip it in cold water, it'll straighten that right out, no problem. Uh, but just a really nice looking club. We got a little bit of QC uh, issues going on here with mine. Got some random brown paint on some of the spikes. But I think that's okay. It doesn't really bother me that bad. I think this is a really cool uh, feature there. Does have a little eyelet here at the handle, but I'm not really sure what that's for. I, I didn't necessarily see anything on him where you could actually like, you know, hang the club. So there's your club. And then the other weapon, we have his traditional whip. This is what we're all used to seeing Beastman with. Got a nice metallic plastic there for the handle area. And then just a string, just a cord here. It does not have mindy wire in it. Just kind of has like a shoestring feel to it. So that is your traditional whip weapon there for Beastman. And then we have kind of more of the traditional look there for Beastman with the shoulder fur. Got some spikes there across the top. Got what looks like a necklace kind of protruding out from the fur. Wraps around the back side of him. We'll take a look at what this looks like here in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and take a look at Beastman himself because some of the accessories that he has are currently on him straight out of packaging. So one thing that we will look at here is right here in the head area. So he does have a head covering. So this is kind of like a wolf or a beast of some sort, I guess you could say. He's got some spikes down the back. Got those nice teeth painted there. This just kind of sits on top of his head there just like that. So it looks really good. I mean, it kind of covers up his eyes, but uh, you know, I, I, I like the look of it. I think it's a really cool look. Let's throw this down for just a second as we continue to look at this guy. Got real nice shoulder spikes coming up and over. Now this actually all connects here from the belt itself. Got a real cool looking skeleton face there on the front of that. And got these spikes that kind of come up and over and kind of hold this fur in place. So th this is real, probably not real fur, but it's it's if it has the impression or feels like real fur on his shoulders, which is a really, really cool feature here. You'd almost consider that like a soft goods there that Mattel's putting this guy out for. So again, $32.99. This really feels like we're getting a lot for $32.99 with this beast, man. So you've got the fur just kind of sits up there on the shoulders. And um, I think this actually kind of holds that in place, kind of holds this fur in place. We'll take a better look at that when we actually remove this and put the other one on. But as we continue to look over this guy, got some nice shoulder pads up here. These are removable if you don't want those. 
you can see you can just pop that little peg out. Those will come off. Same thing right here for the wrist gauntlets on both sides. Got the shoulder spikes on both sides as well. We do have some additional wrist attire there underneath the spikes. Moving on down into the loincloth area, real nice blue. Got kind of a tribal artwork here in the pelvic area. Coming around to the back, more blue, has that fur look to it. Looks really, really nice. And then as we come down, you've then got the knee and the ankle armor, which looks really nice. Got those same spikes on it that we see up here with the armor up top. Those are removable. You can see they just have straps that wrap around the back of the calves and those can be removed if you so wish. One thing to note, not a big deal, but I am noticing some of this fur is coming off here on my table. So gonna lose a little bit of that probably as you play with and manipulate this figure. Now let's go ahead and let's pop off his garb here, the upper garb. And that's easily done. There is a peg right here on the back. You'll pop that loose. And then this just pulls right up over the top of the head, just like so. So you can see here, this is actually connected to this particular shoulder armor. So if you want to use the fur, it does look like you're going to have to go ahead and use this shoulder armor. You probably could disconnect it. I'm not going to do it because I, I don't really feel like it's meant to be done. I guess if that makes sense. So we're going to leave it as is. So you guys, once you get yours, you can play with it and manipulate that if you wish. So there's our base body beast man. Looks really good. Kind of got him in a little bit of a hunched over position. He's got pretty good abdominal crunch there, uh, which kind of makes that easy to do. So let's go ahead and let's put on kind of what I would consider the more traditional look here. So this is, should be pretty easy here. It looks like it just kind of fits right over the top of that head and then come around to the back and pop that through the strap. And there we have the more traditional look to Beast Man. So that's really, really cool. I like that. This is probably the way I'll be displaying mine. Let's go ahead, we'll do some hand swap out, see what it looks like with some of these weapons in his hands. So there we got our Beast Man holding his club, looks really good. He has no problem holding that. The joints are really nice on this guy. They actually move pretty fluidly, pretty, pretty easy. We'll run through articulation here shortly. Let's go ahead and throw the whip in the other hand. So there we got the whip. Again, it's kind of like a shoelace, shoestring. It's, it's not gonna do anything for you. From a posability standpoint, it's just going to dangle down, but it looks good. I really like that. Both of these, he holds well enough. They don't weight the arms down. He does a good job of holding those up without his arms falling over. So yeah, very, very happy with this look here for Beast Man. All right, let's run through articulation on this guy as this definitely is a different mold than what we've gotten with any of the other MOTU figures to date. So bringing him in here, the head, there's a ton of range of motion in this head. You can just see... I mean, he can almost look straight up, uh, which is really, really nice. It's not a whole lot down. He's pretty much going to be looking straight forward. But, I mean, we can we can just move this thing all around. Now, one thing I do want to note here, there's some kind of nasty lines here in the jaw area. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. But this jaw piece is a separate piece from the head. It's not all molded together. And that's very, very evident when you look at the figure up close. That would be one of the only negatives I would really say so far to this figure. If that was a little smoother, a little less noticeable maybe. But overall, it looks really good. I mean, you can see there the paint job on the face is pretty solid. Teeth painted well, kind of got that tribal effect around the eyes and all. Looks really good. But the head, you're going to have no problem there as far as the movement. I mean, we can do a full 360 even with this on. So, And this is slightly limiting the rotation some. Out here in the shoulders, we can get up to there with no problem at all. Full 360, swivel in the upper bicep there. We do have double jointed elbows there, but all of that's gonna be hindered a little bit by all this just armor and bulkiness, but he does have the double joints in there, which is nice. And then as far as the wrist, you've got just your standard wrist articulation. A little bit hindered again by all the armor, the gauntlets in there, but standard articulation. We've already talked about the crunch here. Lots of crunch in this abdomen area. You got a swivel in the abdomen, in the upper abdomen, as well as in the lower abdomen there. He'll swivel. You can get the splits out as really as far as you want to take them. A little bit hindered by the loincloth there. We got a cut in the upper thigh. We do have nice double jointed knees there. Lots of range of motion. And then down in the feet, we got lots of range of motion, however, slightly hindered again, especially with that forward tilt with the ankle armor there and then side to side, no problem. So a very articulated figure, 
for such a big and bulky guy. Let's bring in a couple of his Revelation counterparts and take a look at size comparison. So here we've got two of my favorite figures in this line, the Skeletor, as well as the Trapjaw. Trapjaw may even be my favorite figure in this line. You can see he's just a big, broad, burly chunk of plastic and fur. So they've done a great job here with Beast Man, just giving him that bulk that he really deserves to give him the look that we all want as this character. Let's grab a couple figures from a couple other lines. And there we got Beast Man with a standard six inch Marvel Legend as well as the Storm Collectibles Kung Lao. So you can see, obviously, this is a seven inch figure line, so they're gonna be a good bit bigger than your Marvel Legends are. But there you go as far as scale. And lastly, we'll just drop the tape measure here on him. He stands, or maybe he doesn't stand. Let's try this again. He stands right at maybe seven and an eighth or so inches. So just a hair above seven inches there. I think where this guy's size really shines is just the bulkiness and the broadness that they brought to Beastman for us, which I think is very accurate, in my opinion, for what I would expect of a Beastman. All right, guys, here is our Beastman fully decked out. As final thoughts for him, I really, really love this figure. Get out to your local targets. Look for him. I'm starting to see him hitting all over the place. So I think you got a good chance of this guy popping up this weekend or early in the week. Drop those comments down below and let me know what you think of this guy. Are you collecting the Revelation line? And will you be picking this beast man up? Also, if you enjoyed this review, hit that like button as well as drop a sub if you're not already subscribed to the channel. We do toy reviews and toy hunts pretty consistently on this channel. We enjoy getting out and finding these toys as this was a toy hunt item that I found here recently. I appreciate you guys. I hope everyone has a great rest of your week. Until next time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.